Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to yet another reaction for Red vs. Blue Season 9 Project Freelancer. This is going to be my reaction batch for episodes 5, 6, 7, and 8 for you guys, so I hope you look forward to it. Oh my days. Project Freelancer has kicked off. It is both a, a, a combination of the present event happening with Epsilon in the capture unit, uh, of his warped kind of alternate reality of, of Blood Gulch um, inside the capture unit from his memories told to him by Caboose, as well as a shift to the past of the origin and the kind of the rise of Project Freelancer, uh, you know, the, the whole kind of focus and shift of Dr. Leonard Church and his original agenda and his original plan for the project and everything. And I am so excited to see where the rest of this season goes because the first batch had me going out absolutely nuts obviously you guys already saw it at this point but uh, a couple of things that i want to address and mention before we jump into the next batch um i am going to be testing out a new format for the remainder of seasons 9 and 10 of project freelancer as we continue and progress on with the rest of the story arc i want to hear your guys's opinion of what you guys think of this new format um and i'm doing it for three main reasons um you know despite how season 8 went because I, like i mentioned to you guys in the previous batch and in the review i wasn't really happy with how i decided to go about watching season 8 despite of a lot of you guys in Enjoying the fact that I binged it because I enjoyed it so much and uh, I, I kind of want to make this apparent right off the bat despite my initial claim at the end of my last reaction I tried so hard to not watch this batch like continuously one after the other after the other after the other um I personally don't really enjoy the binge experience, right? I really am someone who enjoys waiting an excruciating week to think over and to marinate and to theorize and to craft and to talk to people about episodes that I watch week to week. I, I like being a part of that zeitgeist experience of you know, talking about what's happening in the moment. And because, you know, I am catching up, a lot of people just want me to get through to everything and catch up as soon as possible. But I like to marinate on things. I like to let things settle. I like to think things over. And it, it, it adds for better theory crafting and overall just... I don't know. I just like to digest it in, in, in the same way that you guys did when, you know, when you guys watched the week to week and I'm watching multiple episodes per week. So, um, you know, at the very least, this is kind of the experience that I enjoy. So, uh, the three main reasons is number one, I don't really enjoy the binge experience. So from here on out, uh, I will be watching batch reactions weekly. Um, I'm not going to be watching these, um, you know, unless something, unless it's like too good to stop, I will do like what I did in season eight. And, you know, unfortunately I can't really tell it's, it's it, once I'm in the moment, once it happens and, and I'm, and I'm in there and I'm like, okay, I have to watch the next episode, then it'll happen. But I do not plan. I do not plan on binging season nine or season 10 or any other season at this point, just because it's not, it's personally not the experience that I'm really into. The second reason, and I think the biggest reason for that is because like I mentioned in my review, like I mentioned in the last batch for season eight reactions um i binged all of season eight in a day and because of that i um was really detached from the comment section when i started uploading episode batches weekly right so i would upload a reaction batch and people would comment but from my perspective i had already seen that episode weeks ago so there was already a detachment from what you guys were experiencing and commenting and sharing on versus what i was already experiencing by the time i had finished the season and by the time i was working on my review and you know starting up season nine and stuff like that so the big reason that i that i want to do these weekly is because i want to just have a better connection with you guys in the comments of being no more than a week ahead so whatever goes up on youtube i am a week ahead for what early access patrons get over on patreon for uh whether it's a reaction or a review of of uh you know red versus blue content in general so uh again like i said i i want to be closer to you guys with with the discussions especially for a lot of you guys who enjoy these reactions i don't want to be too far ahead so that way you guys feel like you're out of the loop or you guys feel detached from my experience as well so that's the second reason and the big implementation that i'm going to be adding at the beginning of all of my reactions and possibly at the end of all of my reactions is a debriefing on the previous reaction and the big reason for that is because of my review of the overall season uh season eight's review was over an hour long and if i don't do these debriefing discussions of my thoughts and theories of previous episodes putting everything together letting you guys know uh where i am mentally and where i am in terms of the story and things that i'm getting um i can 
very easily see my season nine review or even season 10 review because it's a uh, project freelancer it's both arcs uh being well over an hour based on what i found out in the last couple of episodes so um that's what i want to get into right now i want to get into a little bit of a debriefing of episodes one through four uh, i wrote down a bunch of things and like i said this is going to be my format moving forward so for episodes uh five six seven and eight i'm going to have my my, my thoughts about that at the beginning of next week's reaction batch uh, for the batch of episodes that I'll have for that and so on and so forth uh, so that way again the review is a little bit more con condensed and there's not a lot of repeating and kind of retelling of what I already know so these are just bullet points again just for the sake of letting you guys know where my where, where I am in terms of uh, what I've understood watching it for the first time and then going back and re-watching it before getting into episodes five six seven and eight for you guys so Obviously, Project Freelancer, like I suspected, like I theorized and, and mentioned back in Season 8, as well as my review of Season 8, is a flashback story of the origins of Project Freelancer, uh, Dr. Leonard Church's original uh, design and original agenda to create this, uh, you know, this project, uh, you know, with AI and freelancers in mind to help in the Great War, the continuity of mankind as a species. And also, you know, his own his own little hidden agenda with, you know, with what he had in mind for the beta, as well as Allison, his his I, I'm assuming his his deceased wife. So um, this is a flashback point. Um, another thing I wasn't I was really surprised by was the original character models. I don't know if they're original character models or if they're models that are ripped from the Halo game. But basically, Leonard Church and the counselor aren't in spartan armor so those could maybe be like drone characters that are in the halo series that they decided to use and model as original characters for the red versus blue storyline um but i thought that was really fascinating that you know for for once we don't have people on screen that are in spartan armor and they actually feel like it actually feels like rooster teeth is really coming into their own with with having original character models to tell the story and to push it further away from being you know, a rip of, of Halo's engine, especially with the animation and everything and the 3D effects and stuff like that. I think it's a phenomenal, especially how they use the map packs and they like flush out and 3D, you know, render the map packs to kind of feel like their own world. It doesn't feel like an actual map in the game. So I thought that was really neat. And of course, the Steelers of the show, we have North Dakota, South Dakota, and Agent Carolina uh, in the last batch of episodes, finally seeing the dynamic of North and South as siblings. The first, the second episode, episode i think was twins so it was literally dedicated to the dynamic duo of north and south their their synergy of how they work with you know being in an operative uh being on this mission together south is very very reckless um and i think we're seeing more of that now because there were little glimmers of it back in blood gulch when she was solo and kind of doing her own thing you know she was recovery too she kind of went behind um you know washington's back and stuff like that and she was really reckless like she took delta she was like i'm out of here you don't have to worry about me anymore i finally got the ai that i always wanted because i didn't get one and my brother did and i'm i'm just first off they're a dynamic fucking duo so it seems like um south dakota is more based on close range combat while her brother is more long range he has a sniper rifle which is obviously uh you know a weapon honed for long range combat and then he has a, an smg which i assume is for if he has to get up in someone's face or he has to get close quarters he has an smg for that and that one shot where he just like shoots the dude all the way up his body that was like the coolest thing ever and then obviously south she has her pistol which she's a bad at like she's really good with the pistol and then she also has the shotgun which you know she switches off with her brother so i i think like they are a dynamic fucking duo and then you have carolina which caught me off guard caught me off guard really bad actually because you know we know the badass female of red versus blue was tex Tex is the badass. Tex is the like the, the the head honcho freelancer slash artificial intelligence that we all know and love and knows that can kick ass, especially since she fucked up the Reds, the Blues. She fought two freelancers by herself, and you know she's just the badass. And so I was really surprised and uh, almost wondering the approach and why she. It almost came off as like they were teasing tex like i was suspecting i was expecting tex when they were like her send her in and she's number one and you know what i mean what's she doing here and all that other stuff first off the first thing that caught me off guard is that it has a similar armor ability enhancement similar to tex she has 
I, I guess she has like camouflage, which, uh, you know, like Allison basically, or also if I say Allison, I'm using Allison and Tex interchangeably. I know that they're not the same person at the end of the day, but cause I know I don't want someone in the comments to needlessly remind me and explain to me, Hey, Tex and Allison and the beta are all different. If I say Allison, I mean Tex, but I use it interchangeably because of that. So just don't mind me on that. But anyways, Tex uses invisibility aka active camouflage that's kind of like the ability in the halo universe and that's her armor ability and then you have carolina who has a very similar ability that also camouflages her but it seems like it reacts to the environment so she was behind like this pitch black wall and she kind of melded like she kind of blended into the environment everything it's, the map's called blackout for christ's sake so her armor was all black and i was like that's texas armor color but it had a different armor model. So I was a little confused. I was like, is it Tex or is it Carolina? So that was, I don't know if if they were just playing it up to be like, okay, we're going to debate everybody. We're going to have everyone think that it's Allison. But then at the end of the day, it's going to be like, you thought I was Tex, but it was me, Carolina. So um, uh, th that was really interesting to see that. Also, like I said, the armor color was similar to Tex. The, the armor ability was similar to Tex. Um... So, so I was kind of curious about that. Also, for some people out there who were wondering and asking me, they were like, hey, um, how did you know about Agent Carolina? Like, it was almost like you knew that that was going to be her. One of two reasons. Number one, they've they've addressed uh, Carolina several times uh, back in Blood Gulch uh, about the fact that she is a freelancer, that she used to have two artificial intelligence at some point. So I was always expecting and looking forward to when... Um, agent carolina would come into the mix um also two instances that happened in 2016 led me to know when agent carolina would come into the mix and how i would know that it was her so first off for those of you who don't know and i'm really sorry that this is a really long intro but i know for those of you guys who are super dedicated i know you guys are really invested in hearing my thoughts and theories and opinions and stuff like that so i really appreciate you guys sitting through this and and hearing me ramble um it's really much appreciated so back in 2016 i was on season three of red versus blue and at that time um, it was the first time that I had ever gone to RTX after Ruby Volume 3 ended. The community helped me get to RTX for the first time. I met a bunch of my friends, people that I met online, and people that I kind of became friends with over the years. And one individual by the name of Allison Beggs, my friend Allie, she's, uh, she's a cosplayer and a really, really, really big uh, fan of Red vs. Blue. Um, her favorite character is actually Agent Carolina. And my first year at RTX, uh, which was really crazy, I was on a panel. Um, I was on a panel with a bunch of other, uh, you know, Ruby people on YouTube, like basically reactors. Um, and Allison Beggs was one of them. She did reactions to Ruby volume three at the time. And she cosplayed as, uh, agent Carolina at the time. Now, what's really interesting too, is that there's actually faces like actual rendered faces of the freelancers. And I was like blown the fuck. I was like, what the heck faces? Like, because we always see them with armor and in Halo, you never see a character without their helmet on. So that in of itself means like every character has their own facial identity and stuff like that. So while I don't know what Agent Carolina looks like, like what her face looks like, because you know, she still has her helmet on in the show. Um, I knew what her armor looked like because my friend Allison cosplayed as her. I will show you this clip right here so you guys can kind of check it out for yourselves. Yeah, Stan said he'll be there because he's going to be at the fan service podcast. And that ends as ours begins, so he yeah. said he'll be a few minutes late. My friend is still late. Yeah. Well, it's nice seeing you, and that cosplay is pretty badass. Seeing it in person. I'll be sitting in an event. So that was the first instance of knowing what Agent Carolina looked like by the time we got her. So I wasn't like... Who the heck is this character? But the kind of cat out of the bag situation of knowing that Agent Carolina, or at least that I knew Agent Carolina would be in season nine, was from the voice actress herself. So I met Jen Brown, the voice of uh, Piranikos, as well as um, Agent Carolina, which at the time I didn't realize that, but uh, Jen Brown voices Agent Carolina. I'm really excited to kind of hear more extended uh, interactions and, and dialogue with her and other characters to kind of see if I can pick up Jen's voice and Pira's voice and stuff like that since apparently they are two, you know, parallel opposite characters. Um, 
So uh, Jen Brown actually informed me after I met her at RTX that she was in season nine. Her character debuted in season nine. And like I said, in 2016, I was in season three still. So I was still in the middle of Blood Gulch, had no had no idea what to expect of her character. So I will show you that clip as well to kind of give you guys that transparency. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I love your voice. Oh my god, you are so amazing. Thank you so much it's so for nice everything. To meet you. I, can I get a picture of you, please? Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> please, please. Oh my goodness. Jenna, it was great meeting it was you. So nice meeting <laughs> can you I get one more hug? Yes. Thank you so much. I loved your voice. I'm watching Red vs. Blue right now, and I know you voiced someone in there, so I'm looking forward to that all like over again. Nine. Okay, I'm on season three right okay, now. So I don't come until season nine. So you got <laughs> I gotta wait. <laughs> So basically, for those of you guys who are wondering, that is how I came in to understand and know that Agent Carolina would be showing up at some point during the season, and why I wasn't really surprised when it was her, more so excited that it was her after, you know, anticipating her appearance after so long. So, um, that, that's that for Agent Carolina, and uh, I kind of want to address really quickly the little subtleties that are kind of forming with i think the story that's going to be told overall for blood uh i'm sorry for project freelancer and this is in regards to the soldier like the coffee soldier who got killed by south during the last batch of episodes where she was extracting a data file and when she was trying to run out you know you had the guy that was like attention assholes give us the data file you know you're surrounded you know you can't get away and stuff like that so for some reason they ran this they ran this operative they ran this operation for north and south to infiltrate this cryogenics research facility in the middle of the ocean in the middle of the arctic and they extracted this file and i'm wondering what the importance of this file is but more importantly than that it's who they stole it from the coffee mugs had uh, a label on them had a, a logo on it from an industry known as Charon Industries. My dumbass said Cryon Industries during my reaction, but Charon Industries. And this is the first time that we're hearing of a third party organization, a third party establishment that is not the UNSC and is not Project Freelancer. It is a third party entity that exists within the universe that we are hearing now for the first time. So I'm wondering what the significance of this industry is, why Dr. Leonard Church is basically targeting this industry and targeting them for whatever data that they have, if they are a rival company, if they are a rival force for the UNSC or, you know, the director and, you know, his overall project, what it is exactly that was in those data files that they stole. Is it related to Project Freelancer? Is it related to artificial intelligence? Is it related to anything that is going to be happening in the near future? So um, I definitely wanted to let you guys know that I did pick up on that. Like I said, I called it cryon industries when i first watched it but i'm going to be keeping my eye out on that and seeing if anything comes of, of of charon industries as we move forward a couple of cameo things that i want to mention too before we continue uh casey lee williams was 12 years old when she was doing like almost kind of like that opera rendition um apparently that is uh agent carolina's theme which is crazy absolutely crazy to hear what she sounded like at 12 years ago like Eight years ago, nine, eight, eight or nine years ago during season 10, season nine, and and like hearing how mature she sounded. She sounds just as mature as she does now with what she's doing with Ruby, uh, you know, volume five and stuff like that, which is absolutely insane to me. Also, apparently Smosh got a cameo appearance too. Anthony and um, I forgot the other guy's name, but uh, Smosh basically had a small part with those two, uh, uh, um, those two soldiers that were bickering over the rifle. They were like, come on, man, that's my rifle. And the other dude's like, oh my God, I got a rifle, I'm saved. And they both just get bodied by Carolina. So I thought that was pretty cool as well. I'm also wondering, if the artificial intelligences are already active like already in effect with the freelancers because we saw york use his bubble shield and we saw agent carolina using her um using her camouflage and i'm not entirely sure if you need like absolutely need an, uh, an artificial intelligence to use your armor enhancement i know you can get away with using your armor enhancement here and there without an ai but there are some basically some drawbacks and it's not as optimal as if you had an artificial intelligence and before we jump into the reactions i promise you guys i'm, I'm really sorry that i'm rambling i know a lot of you guys 
don't really care for me talking and kind of expanding my mindset on my thoughts and everything like that with when especially when it comes to reaction but again the reason why i'm doing this is because if i didn't do this now my review for this season is going to be like two three hours long and i don't really know if anyone's gonna want to sit through something like that so uh the last thing that i want to mention is epsilon and his predicament right now in blood gulch with how he's kind of handling the situation of seeing the reds and more importantly the reds the blues seem like they have their head on their shoulders a little bit more than the reds do um and kind of how i was taken aback as well that sarge simmons and griff are very different from their real life persona their real life counterparts versus this alternate blood gulch that epsilon is trapped in within the memories of the capture unit and this is incredible foreshadowing from bernie and i'm being hit with all of this excitement all of these reveals all of this you know action and cinematography and all this freaking music and everything that it kind of went over my head where i was initially saying to myself what is up with this blood gulch this is not blood gulch this is an alternate blood gulch because none of these characters are acting the way that they do and then it hit me. Then it hit me. If you go back to Blood Gulch and you go to uh, the moment where we first entered Caboose's mind, Caboose has a different mental perception of the people around him. He does not see Sarge the way we see Sarge. He does not see Simmons the way we see Simmons. He does not see anybody in this world the way that they actually are because caboose is a special case and we love him and he's the lovable idiot and he's doing the best he can all right but that is the reason why these characters aren't the way they are you have caboose this lovable idiot who's trying his best he is the one who told epsilon all of these stories of the original blood gulch and he is not telling us the Blood Gulch from our perspective because we know Simmons is the kiss ass. We know that Griff is the slacker. And we know Sarge is the uptight leader that likes to mess around with his lackeys. Um, and we know that Donut is very enthusiastically honest about things and he comes off as gay. Um, or he might be gay, who knows. But at the end of the day, those are the characters that we've known and loved and established as who they are for the last nine seasons. That's who we see them as. That is not how Caboose sees them. And so, because of that, Caboose has thus delivered an alternate perception of these characters into Epsilon's memory. So, in fact, when Epsilon... But because Epsilon has already had an extended interaction with all of these characters, he knows who they really are. So he's kind of been thrown into this Twilight Zone-esque situation where he's in this alternate reality that does not measure up to what reality actually is so he's trying to figure out he's like fuck this is not going to work sarge is not the real sarge is not acting the way that he actually acts in reality so this is going to throw off my whole plan because basically he was just supposed to live life the way that it was supposed to be and you know kind of make things work for him to for him and tex to get back together and that's also in Tex's regard, too, because Tex was also told those same stories by Caboose. So Tex and Epsilon have a very warped perception of what Blood Gulch events are like in the present compared to the situation they are in this alternate version uh, within the capture unit. So uh, first off, I really love how the foreshadowing kind of tied into everything, especially with how Caboose's mental state is in the affairs of everything going on with Epsilon. And I'm really intrigued to see how that goes because I thought Epsilon's, you know, the, the things that were going on with Epsilon and Blood Gulch, I thought that was going to be filler stuff to kind of just be there while we go through the past of, of, uh, of Project Freelancer. But I'm really happy that that's not the case. So overall those are all of my initial thoughts of debriefing the last four episodes again i'm really sorry this is probably like a 20 30 minute intro right here which i'm really sorry about i know you guys uh, are really excited for the reactions but i also wanted to get my thoughts out there all of these things are going to be in the back of my brain as i'm continuing to add things on with season nine um uh you know basically the intro to this new story arc of project freelancer and again thank you guys so much for all of you guys who especially kind of like went through this entire ramble of hearing my thoughts leave any thoughts that you guys have on my uh on my thoughts my opinions my theories all of these speculations that i'm coming to so far with season nine in the comment section i hope you guys enjoy this reaction back thank you guys so much for your support as well and without further ado 
let us begin all right guys we're gonna be continuing with red versus blue season nine with episode five again this is gonna be my reaction back to episodes five six seven and eight for you guys so i hope you look forward to it leave your thoughts in the comments as always and without further ado let us continue in three two one now all right here we go back in blood gulch ow oh ow. yeah that's right they shot <laughs> they ow. shot ow. church in the ow. foot <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thanks for helping me while the rich just shoot me in the goddamn foot. Yeah, well, you told us to stay on the Oh, I love having him back. Yeah, I was helping. Oh, really? Then why aren't you on the cliff right now? Yeah, oh, what's up? Episode 5, over. realignment? Ow. 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 Feels bad, man. Ow. You're back already? What do you mean, already? It took me half an hour to limp across this goddamn <laughs> canyon. Yeah, Jesus, 30 minutes? Kill you. I expect you back never, so in my mind you're early. Shut up. He is right about huh. two different times. You shut up, too. All right, well, now the helping part is definitely over. <laughs> See, exactly Don't yell at Caboose. What are you fixing? Fix Everything. things. Us, the Reds, trying to make things the way they're supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, he he knows how it originally okay? is. Okay? It's Caboose's okay? mind like messed everything down? up. Okay, I don't know. You're wearing full body armor and bleeding. That means you're either dying <laughs> or just whining. Well, I'm hurt. All right, you want yeah. me to call command? Have him send a medic. No, command? No medic. Like Vic? Is medic. Vic still here? Those Did he explain Vic? Bad luck. I already called command. <gasps> you did? Caboose, you're not allowed to use the radio. Right, unless it's emergency. Wait, wait! Call command. And also did they call command? Wait, 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 when does this take place? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, pause. Are the same seek? Uh, I'm trying to remember what happened originally. Like... Okay, 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 so, 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 Church died, they called Command, they sent, I'm pretty sure they called in Doc, after he died. It was either they called in Doc, or they called in Tex, to help with the Reds. I'm wondering if the same, if different scenarios are being created, but the same outcomes always happen. So Doc will eventually get here. Tex will eventually get here. Wyoming will event, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like a, I don't want to say like a paradox. I don't think that's what the term is, but it's like, no matter what happens, the, the end results will always be the, is this the cycle? I wonder. Okay. Okay. Anyways, let's resume. Three, two, one, play. Bye. Nothing. Caboose. I pro I promise you'll not see anything show up here that I ordered. <laughs> Nothing at all. Yeah, so Our he's like calling toll-free numbers. What the hell is he talking about? Well, you sound upset. <laughs> you probably want some beef jerky. The hell? They'll be ready in six to eight weeks. Oh you ordered God! He ordered didn't. beef jerky. Oh, won't be so mad when we're storing twice as much ammo as we normally can. <laughs> it's the billionth time, Caboose. You can't dehydrate bullets. I love Caboose. You actually order all those stupid gadgets that you see on TV? Maybe. Hey, Sometimes. leave him alone. And that special forces person also. You idiot. Wait, special forces person. Oh, <gasps> oh, yes. Yes, they are sending... He's about Tex? Command is. Yes. Unless it's bad. In which case, I don't know what oh, you're talking it's a, about. It's Tex. What? They aren't supposed to send anybody till after I die. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. You walked into Red Base. Caboose, they... did they say who they were sending? Uh, uh, yes, they definitely did. Who? Who? Okay. Do you remember who they- No. God damn it. Fuck off, Caboose! Hey, Griff. Griff. It's either- Stop right there, Simmons. It's either- What? Is it danger? The blues? It's either Doc no, or you are Tex. not walking across my- Oh my way. god! I no! This is not Griff, you! This. this is for not you, you, Griff. Job well done. There's always time for that. I believe you know my motto. You don't have a motto. That's right, because there's always something more productive that I could be doing. <laughs> Who has time to sit around making a motto? Oh my gosh, this is so weird. You can actually Sorry. see his reflection on the floor. That's how good he it's cleaned it. Long. Just do what I do. Count to three. A hundred times. Why wouldn't I just count to three hundred? Because doing things three times is fun. Turning off <laughs> light switches, locking the door, turning off light switches. Okay. Then turning off light switches twice. Dude, he You're cleaned right. those floors so good he could eat off of them. Just to make sure that no one I love dies. Turning off light switches? There. That feels better. Oh Dude, my gosh, this is so odd. Clean floor, which you can't walk look at that, you could literally... Yeah, look at the sparkle. You know the rules, and what happens when we abandon the rules? Everybody gets germs and dies. <laughs> oh, silly me. I forgot the reason I came in here. Yeah. Sarge wants you to take a break, Griff. You're on break right now. A break. A break? Um, I don't know the meaning! The <laughs> Just stop working. 
Relax. No. Relax. Huh. Yeah, right. Oh my How god, you exactly love relaxing! Is there like a manual? It's like your pastime. I... Just stop cleaning. Do nothing. What happened to Donut? He's in his bunk, reading that book he always reads. What book? Oh gosh. Oh, I don't ask. Is he that his diary? He's got flowers on. <laughs> wow. And drawings of things, like hearts. He likes to read it and cry. I'm not crying! Oh. Uh, help, Donut. We're so he, does he have a journal? A robot building kit command sent us. I'm not really feeling oh, up to it. Oh, Lopez. That blue guy have you depressed? You're bothered by what he said, aren't you? Maybe. Why did you listen to him? I didn't even know you had feelings, Donut. Well, I do, <laughs> That's okay? That's messed up. Come on, Whatever. now. Come help us if you want. Up to you. Okay. I'll be out in a minute. I want to get my head together. <laughs> Need to clean my weapon. Maybe light a few candles. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> candles really not the best light source for feeling. You do you, buddy. Ugh, not everything oh, is no, about the floor! Simmons. What did I say? Oh, oh no! What? You're dragging oh, mud in the floor! Oh, Donut, you know Donut. better! Looks like Donut got tracks all over your shiny floor grip. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. I'm on break anyway, right? <laughs> Why should I give a fuck? <gasps> oh! oh he's, is it changed? really, really good to say that. <gasps> what is wrong with everyone? Man, I hate when things change. Change. Oh my god! He's affecting them! The data you recovered has pinpointed the location of a very important target for Project Freelance. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Excellent work. Thank you, sir. Counselor, please update the board. Oh, what? Dismissed. Oh, no! No! Said the Whoa! Success, sir. One of the mission objectives was stealth. Your carelessness revealed our No! And this is why she resents her brother! They'll be ready for us. Dismissed. Oh no! Can talk to her? Okay. <laughs> Maybe we give her a minute. Shit. Holy shit! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. Okay, caboose. Holy Think shit! Back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause. Oh my goodness, dude. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. I'm literally sweating from the freaking. Oh my god! Holy shit, dude. So that's. So it's been set up since that far back. Her brother outranks her. She's basically reprimanded for the fact that she's too reckless. That's literally what I said in the thing. I'm like, she's so reckless even now. Which caused her to be... Aw, oh, dude. That's just sowing the seeds right there. She's gonna end up resenting her brother. Especially since, like, she's like the oddball out, right? Out of the three of them, she's the only one without an AI. And then she gets demoted. And then she, like, runs off and goes on her own and does whatever. I just hope that, like, the... I just hope the bond between her and her brother kind of... I, I don't know, because Washington mentioned, like, she put her brother... Or Delta mentioned that she put her brother in a position to be killed by the meta. So she can get his AI for herself. So I don't know how far gone she is. And she looks so badass, dude! She looks so fucking cool! Like, she's got, like, long... Like, she's got, like longish short hair right like covers her face and stuff like that wow and they have like the same hair color too obviously they're twins so that is pretty awesome man i, I wonder if we're going to see what carolina looks like next because we already saw what the other two look like and and uh, and the director said that they f that they recovered a valuable piece of information for project freelancer so i'm wondering if the ai have not yet been implemented because i'm pretty sure project freelancer was the whole purpose was to create multiple artificial intelligence for said freelancers um so this could potentially be like the 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 like the, the the cornerstone of what allows for like the alpha and stuff like that so oh my goodness oh my gosh okay anyways Okay, I'm calm down. <laughs> this is getting so good. All right, three, two, one, go. Called command about the special forces person. And he's changing what the reds right now. You? They said, this is command. We read you blue base. After that. Roger. Over and out. <laughs> so we're between those two. Goodbye and hello are not the important parts of the conversation. No, I know, and my name isn't even Roger. 
Although that is a very cool name. <laughs> Roger. I wonder if it fits. Familiar Roger, feelings. Roger, yes, Roger, they're remembering who they were. Roger, put that down. Roger, will you please be my best friend? Signed, Church. <laughs> yes, your new name is the best. I like it. What are you Signed doing? Church. What? Again. What did they tell you in the middle? What did they say? I need caboose, you to focus. Please, caboose. caboose. Oh, my. I need you to focus. Roger. Okay. Uh, it says it sets one of our troops was hurt. It says we're outnumbered. They're gonna send they someone. It's a special agent to help us recover. Text. And they said Text. that agent would be here. Yes. No. No. Not. not when. Yet. When. When I was on the call with them. I mean. Oh I my mean, God, Caboose! Please. When? Please. I'll command. How else would they tell me? Okay. Stop. 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 Let's just go through this step by step. Okay. <laughs> This is so you infuriating. Yes. <laughs> and they said they were sending a special agent. Yes. To our base. Yes. yes. When did they say the special agent was coming? Uh, right before they gave me my new nickname. God damn it, Caboose. All right, just forget it. <sighs> no, see, it's Roger now, remember? See, I know it can be confusing sometimes. Church, you have to keep up. Hey, Roger, what's wrong Come with Come on. Oh, I don't know. He's having trouble understanding something. You know how he is with that. Oh, jeez. Oh, they're creating Lo oh, Okay, so they're creating oh, well, Lopez right now. Thanks. I didn't even know I was good with machines. Oh my god. You know so saying? Donut's coming yeah, around to his full self. Hey, Griff was just like, fuck that, I'm on break. Sure, go ahead. So, um, in private? Simmons oh, is already sure, Simmons, yeah. so I Sarge is the only one that needs to kind of be flipped okay. around. I mean, you're not talking about me, right? <laughs> <clears throat> right? You're not talking about me? Be right back, Alright, Simmons. Simmons, calm sure down. Just what my dad said. What's up, Donut? Sarge? <laughs> That's messed up, his dad left him. You know... Feelings and stuff. Oh really? gosh, here we go. Oh, He's gonna have the talk. I just want to talk to someone about some thoughts I've been having. Oh, oh geez, myself. I've been yeah. having these weird thoughts lately. And you always seem so interested in the men and how we're doing. Oh. Well, that's my job. <laughs> Lay it on me. I'm all ears. All right, Sheila, Sheila Phyllis. Hey, uh, activate. Uh, uh, oh, I am the M08 main I battle can't. tank. Starts. What the fuck are you doing? I'm trying to turn on the damn tank by yelling at it. Why don't you just use a key? You have keys for the Does, tank? Is, nah, is Phyllis not in there yet? Good. Thanks, you're a big help. Me? I'm not the one yelling at the tank. Hey, the TV is on the fritz too. You want to come inside and yell at it? <laughs> Maybe you can insult its mother or something. Oh, I calm need down. The tank running before tech shows up. Right. The secret agent who also just happens to be your girlfriend. Hmm. It's complicated. And you think if you have a tank, Dude, this that's is so her. paradox. Oh, I need to defend us in case things get a little. Oh, no! With her. I hope he doesn't like accidentally said, kill her. Complicated? Yeah, complicated. I had a girlfriend once. Nobody cares. I met her on the internet. <laughs> oh man, your girlfriend was a dude. Her name was Amelia. She would send me letters all the time. Aww. High maintenance. Letters from a family. Letters High maintenance for letters? Online. Come on now. Even about investment opportunities in other countries. What? Dude, I don't think your girlfriend's name was Amelia. <laughs> I think it was email. I'm pretty sure you fell in love with your email. <laughs> it was always there for me. Until I forgot our uh, we need you Sheila. Need we need Caboose to have his well, love back. I guess with her sister, Voice Melia. Oh, she talked too much. Voice Melia? Come on, you stupid tank. Just start, dude. Give it's it up. Phyllis. Stop working on the tank. You can't pick up chicks in a tank anyway. What? Actually, now that I say oh! it, I guess you could pick he up chicks. He remembers! Well, I could. That's what he yeah. said! Stop messing with it. I have to do something. You want to impress your girl? Just listen to me. School's in session. <laughs> about to start the master class. <laughs> Professor Fuck. That's me. Oh my god. That is so good. Dude, you can't pick I'm up chicks in a tank. Like, Dude, they were like, yeah, they're all coming around. Out. Maybe I should see if they want anything to eat. And don't even get me started on the design of the new armor. The lines are all wrong. <laughs> and the color it's palette, lightish red. Like, what is this? Autumn? Am I right? But am I right or am I right? Day. Yeah. Well, thanks for the talk, Sarge. So, uh... He's like so depressed. Lots of things. Feelings mostly. <laughs> That was a long talk. Yeah. Yes, it was. Seems like a lot of feelings. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Well, if there's anyone the troops can confide in, it's you, Sarge. Simmons, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I think you might have used all that up. But you still have some time for me, right? Hmm? I have some thoughts I've been wanting to get off my chest. Uh, he's like, I don't, don't, don't want to deal with you. Get out of my face. To work after <laughs> our heartfelt discussion. Right, sir? Nope. You know what I'm thinking, Simmons? Let's just put a pin in that discussion. A pin? Or yeah, a let's come back to... <laughs> one of them railroad spikes. Tell you what, Jesus. Let's put the in the pen money for Let's just not talk. Let's just take your idea, put it in a box, wrap that box in chains, then cover the whole thing with cement and throw it in the ocean. Jesus Christ, dude. Just, back to work, sir. just, that just, idea I like. just tell him you don't want to talk to him. Oh, we're back. Uh, freelancer case file, level two confidential, mission failure, all objectives. Uh oh. 
That's not good. Dakota, Wyoming, South Washington. Damn, Washington's at the bottom of the barrel, dude. It wasn't your fault. Oh, Wash! Easy for you to say. CT! <laughs> we were all there. It's everyone's responsibility. Damn it! Why are you doing that? What am I doing? Making excuses. Is that Aaron Zach? Not making excuses for myself. Why are you? I'm trying to make you feel better. Yeah. <gasps> Great. She is a girl. Hey, why don't you go make Carolina feel better? Go pat Maine on the head. See Maine. How that works out for you. We all make Maine. mistakes. No, we don't. That's the point. We don't all make mistakes. Some of us very specifically make mistakes, and others don't seem to make any mistakes at all. Connie, come on. That's Connie? why they're doing all this. Connie? The missions, the rankings, they're drawing a line between us, Wash. Yeah. And you're either on one side of that line, or you're on the other. Yep. It's getting pretty goddamn clear which side I'm on. You're not even on the rankings. Holy shit. I'm not talking about you guys. I mean them. Him. The director? The director. He's given us everything. He's helping us. Helping no. Us. Oh, Wash Wake isn't up. cynical Wake yet. the fuck up. Holy He's filtering shit. us. shit. This is a selection process, Wash. I don't know for what, but if you're not at the top of that board, you're not worth anything to him. You're just overreacting. You've always been hard on you. No, she's right. Not she's as hard as they are. She's right. Not nearly as hard as they're going to be. What are you leaving? Is she leaving? Is she done? And don't call me Connie. Connie. Makes me sound like a fucking kid. Oh shit. Jesus Christ. Call me CT. CT, Connecticut. Oh, and that line that I talked about? You better hurry up and figure out what side you're on, Agent Washington. Before they figure it out for you. David. Wow. Holy f <gasps> Oh my god! This is so cool, man! Right. Hold on, pause. This is so awesome. This is so so Oh my gosh, this is so satisfying. This is such a great payoff. That I paid attention to everything, to CT, to, 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 oh my god. And now it's like, we're getting those, we're getting those moments. The interaction between the freelancers. Connie, so is that like, C is for Connie and T is like her last name, Connie something? Or Connecticut for, for, for her freelancer name? So she wasn't even on the board. She doesn't have a freelancer, I'm sorry, she doesn't, she didn't get an AI. She's not on the board. She failed all of her objectives. And she's kind of like... She's not an asset to the director. And his overall plans. And even Washington right here. He's not the cynical bastard that he... That he is now, right? He hasn't been used and abused and left for dead. And shot multiple times. And betrayed. And you know what I mean? He hasn't gone through the ringer yet. <clears throat> and he hasn't been scorned by... Everything. The director, the AI, Epsilon, his memories. Oh my god, he hasn't gone through the memories yet of Epsilon and like dying in his head and you know basically setting him on to who we we eventually see him as in future seasons. Holy fuck, dude. I think he showed up in Out of Mind or he showed up in the the the, the second um the second miniseries that I watched. Where we first got looks of the meta and 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 uh, and um, the twins and stuff like that. Wow! Holy shit, that is so rewarding. It's so rewarding to see these characters and actually see them interact. Like I said, interact with each other and everything. So this is pre AI session of Project Freelancer as well. <clears throat> so I'm really looking forward to seeing how how things unfold right now. All right, we're gonna be continuing. Three, two, one. Now. Students line up over here. Teacher on this side. I'm not doing this. Dude, you've got a girl coming over. <clears throat> you don't know what to say to oh, her. Oh gosh, the love doctor over the here. The first set of lessons is free. How are you qualified <laughs> to teach us this stuff? Are you kidding me? No. No, I'm not kidding. No. Nope. How are you qualified? <laughs> He's not. We talk about girls all the time. I've never seen you with one. I'm, I have lots of... Okay, just shut up and listen. Stay what quiet, is that? What is that, it, like, eruption? Now, before we start, does anyone have any questions? Well, that earthquake uh, yes. that keeps I'm happening. Ah, that was a trick question. You're supposed to hold all questions till the end. Oh, yeah? Why didn't you hold your trick question until the end, then? The rules don't apply to me. Well, maybe <laughs> my question was the magic question, too. Magic yeah, question. Yeah, you're an idiot. So, hey, you're an idiot. The, first lesson. the rules don't apply to you. 
Girl's like a rebel, someone outside the law. Like a criminal? Mm, a bad boy. A Girl's like, like a bad boy. See, they want someone with a free and independent spirit. Something that they can crush into a raw material that can then be molded into what they want. What do they want? They don't know, which is why you have to tell them what they want. Without actually telling them what to do. That sounds hard. All right, dude, you sound like a fucking... Notes? You even know how to write? You don't yeah, sound like the ideal yeah, man right there, Tucker. Yeah, bored here. Okay, then let's do some role playing. <clears throat> I'll give you critiques on your approach. Oh, role God, play. role yeah. play? That's Caboose, weird. You play the girl. You want Caboose to be the woman? <laughs> dude, that's a lot bigger stretch for you to play a man. Trust me. Uh, oh, okay, shit! Say? say whatever a girl would say. Uh, okay, uh... I, uh, I just really wanted <laughs> to meet someone nice, uh, you know, someone who appreciates me for who I am. Aww. Not so much because I'm pretty. We appreciate you. They really want to get to know me because they want to find out what my interests are. And then we can spend time exploring the world together and sharing all the wonderful things in life. <laughs> and make it wonderful. <laughs> Damn, Caboose. What? Do you know girls at all? Talk about how much you like shoes. Yeah, and about reality TV shows. Here, church, you Damn. Saw, just hit on Caboose. Caboose. Talk about stereotyping. Like Jesus Christ. I've been for this role my whole life. Shut up. Okay, church, your girlfriend just got to base. You see her, and you say, uh, hey. Hey there. And oh, she punches him in the face. Like, this is Tex we're talking about, all right? Puppy. She's not your I'm average out. chick. I'm out. I can't do this. Don't be a baby. Yeah. Caboose, stop making sound effects. You're a girl now. Girls can't make sound effects. Quietly angry. And stop narrating. <laughs> okay, fine. There you go. That's it. That's a girl. Okay, church, hit it. Action. Damn, uh, that's uh, messed hey, up. Hey, uh, what are you doing? What's up? Uh, uh, this is so awkward. Up? What are you doing? <laughs> Caboose? Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. Yet, I was just sitting here thinking about shoes and celebrities that only have first name. Perfect. Actually, if you want the truth, I feel like I have to say these things to make myself more appealing. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Uh, okay, it's both I sides of the, the spectrum. Class should uprise against the rich people. I said rebellious, not revolutionary. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I drive a fast car over the speed limit. Oh, all the time. there you oh, go. Do anywhere. <laughs> See? It's easy. All right. That's that's kind of one track minded there. Hey, Lopez. Why he doesn't speak Spanish? Or he speaks a different language? Got the bigger one. It's not how big the switch is, Simmons. It's how you flip. Donut, shut up. All right. Robot's all done. Uh, uh, donut, I love you, bud. I love you, bud. Griff, nah. Tell you flip well it. Said. Donut, sorry. Just clear coated my nails. I'm not chipping one of these, baby. Hey, right. he's back. It would be an honor, sir. That Episode 8, history. Shaking the it. Foundation. It does sound kind of fun. I always did like pushing things. Oh. Uh. Okay. Hey, Sarge, <laughs> what's this robot going to do for us anyway? Oh, well, you know, the usual robot stuff. Math we don't want to do. Right, like that. Hey. Field tasks like maintaining the vehicle. Maintenance yep. the social organization. <clears throat> Maybe I should make a list of all the robot's duties. Hmm. And basically any task that no one wants to do or is part of anyone's official job description. Hey, what about his weather like control thing? And like credit. he has the secret plans in his head. Hey, Simmons, Come on like now. This robot is going to be doing all the jobs you do. <laughs> Damn. Uh, well, don't worry. Oh sure shit, they replaced him? Did you. they really replace Mike him? Sarge? Sarge? Uh-oh. Uh, oh, right. One of the robot's functions is to answer awkward questions that I don't want to. Better turn them on. <laughs> Here we go. Damn. Let's get this panel off, make oh. a specific noise, and then drop it on the ground. Jeez, that's loud. Holy guacamole! What I'm is that? Earthquake. Everyone institute emergency plan. Hold on a second while I put on my marshal's vest. Everyone just remain calm. Stop! Whatever Stop you talking! Do. Panic. Looks like the earthquake stopped. Yeah. You're that just keeps happening, that no though. got to use the emergency plan, aren't you, Simmons? Sorta. Of. Aw, there, there. Don't feel bad. No one's read it anyway. It happens oh. whenever someone, like, That's remembers, a like, a part of their yeah, past, Lopez. I think. Gracias, hey, we got him! <laughs> Robot's on! <laughs> You're currently on, dead in the present, uh, though. He's speaking Spanish. Sounds like it. Maybe the quake messed something up when you activated him, Sarge. Could be a polarity issue. Actually, I ordered nope. the Espanol speech unit on purpose. <laughs> you did? idiot. Yeah. I thought if we had a little multiculturalism around here, we could all learn Spanish You're together. not going to remember. You're not going to know what he's saying. I'm getting our units closer. Not now, Donut. God Seems damn it, Donut. Stop. <laughs> yeah, it does. Don't know what the hell I was thinking. Seems really out of character for me. Alarma. What is happening? Alarma. Terremoto. Hey, look, Simmons. He's already doing your job. Great. <laughs> Want me to get your vest? No. What the hell is happening right now? Is this an earthquake Whoa, or is it like quake. an anomaly? No, you don't seem too worried. No, I'm not. Is if someone shaking this, up the capture real. unit not in real. reality? You mean not real like your fake girlfriend? Like, no, no, no. My girlfriend is real. It's the world that's fake. You know, everything in it. Yeah. Oh, earthquake! 
That was 10 seconds ago. <laughs> really that delay, though. Yeah, maybe I was just early for the next one. Now you'll be ready for when it happens. Oh, shut up. Meteor. What is happening, Everything in though? the world is fake except your girlfriend. Right. Who's in the world. Yes. Where everything is fake. Okay. <laughs> well, I am following all of this as well as I follow everything else. You see, all of this... <laughs> see, okay. We're They're not going to understand! a memory unit, which is sitting in a snowbank somewhere in the world. Yeah. So a snowbank? Right. And that memory unit is dying, so we're feeling all these, like, you know, little quakes and stuff. If we're yeah. in a snowbank, oh, why isn't it cold? Oh, that's right. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't work like that. You need to get out before, like it just, before it's snow gone yeah, forever. Yeah, but a snow globe before, has like, snow in it. I thought it was shuts a down forever. Snow. Uh, you're not getting it. Okay, try to think of it as like, uh, it's like a diorama. Ah, yes. Cafeteria <laughs> for dinosaurs. Shut up, caboose. Jesus. Typhoon. So this memory snowbank thing, it's just sitting there and we're inside it doing all this stuff. Why? I don't know. I, I guess it's so that <clears> I can, you know, figure out about text and what I'm supposed to do. Okay. And if I can't figure it out, well, then I just need to move on to the next memory unit, I guess. Right. And that's oh. by finding those freelancer guys you talked about before. Exactly. And going on some big adventure with them and finding the snow memory. Memory unit. Memory whatever, is the key. And then going into it. Yes. Even though we're already inside it. And so on and so forth. And oh so my god, so it's just like, so it's happened? like freaking Inception. If I do that, I could stop already. And we have to do all that before the memory unit laying in the snow dies. Dies. And we're all crushed by falling rocks. Oh! Good timing. Yeah, it was. Well, that was really good timing. What the hell? Okay, I think it all makes sense now. Uh, good. I'm glad. Dude, that was a fucking joke. I have no clue. What's no, it's up. not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was about to say, what the hell? Check. Hey, Caboose, explain what's going on. Recap for us. We're going to eat lunch with dinosaurs. <laughs> yep, perfect sense. <laughs> I'm going to eat a giant egg. <laughs> oh my god. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, that was. <laughs> I'm going to have lunch with dinosaurs. <laughs> Oh my god, Caboose is a fucking gift, man. Wow. Holy shit, that was like, um, that was really downtime, honestly. So, Epsilon's whole ordeal that's happening right now, hold on, let me organize my camera here so I can kind of discuss what's going on. So, this batch was a little bit more... I guess not as crazy and rambunctious as the first batch, uh, but I do like how they're shifting back and forth, um, making Epsilon's situation just as relevant, just as important with his goal and his objective and whatever he's trying to accomplish with finding text and righting the wrongs and figuring out and kind of switching everything up to the way it originally is uh, in the capture unit, um, trying to make sense of it to, to Caboose. <laughs> lunch with dinosaurs and and tucker of course who's just like you know the ladies man he's just trying to get girls and stuff he doesn't really give a shit um but no the uh the the the, the project freelancer flashbacks are what are really grabbing me and and captivating me at this point for understanding more of these characters who are already gone in the present but understanding their past, understanding their relationships with one another, understanding their place in the grand scheme of, of Project Freelancer, and really seeing their transition of how they were at the very earliest stages of, of, of the project, um, you know, their synergy with one another before the AI come into the mix, before the cynicism and the skepticism and, and, and the betrayal and, and everything else that happens, especially with Washington, with how he's so for, uh, you know, he's defending the director and he's defending, you know, the project and, and this grand scheme that he has in store for them. And he's like, no, you, you know, you're letting this get to you. You're not thinking clearly. You know what I mean? Like you're, you know, it's, <sighs> It's going to make it all the more bittersweet once we actually see the transition. And Washington is still alive, you know what I mean? So at least for Washington, it's not like, it's not a bittersweet ending for him because we know York dies, we know South dies. Well, she dies, you know, in Blood Gulch, but we really don't see the the end result of how she deals with the aftermath of everything that happened at... Um, you know, regarding the director and regarding her brother. And I'm wondering if we're going to see her set her brother up to eventually die by the meta at some point between now and the end of this season. Um, because after York died is when she came into the fold. Um, we got more of CT. We actually see she's a female and her name is Connie. And she seems to be the, I, you know, I mentioned too, I was like, oh my gosh, Washington's at the bottom of the barrel. He's the last ranking member. 
and CT's not even on the fucking list. You know what I mean? So that puts things into perspective as well. It's like, um, okay, she's not on the list. She's not in the top six. So does that mean she's not relevant to the to the project? You know what I mean? And uh, Maine's not on the list either, now that I think about it. Uh, Maine's not on the list either, but he, I think he gets an AI, right? I mean, he's the meta for Christ's sake. Um, <clears throat> so he's not on the list. CT's not on the list because she, you know, she's considered a failure. And um, she kind of just, I guess she went AWOL. I guess she just decided to leave. Um, I am a little bit confused, though, because... Is this the same CT from uh, from season seven in the desert? Had the same armor, brown. You know, I called him Brown Man because I thought it was a guy, but you know, I didn't remember the name. But CT was there, but it sounded like a guy, unless that is somehow like her kid or something, or a relative of hers who inherited her armor. Um, at a different point. And I love the way that she looks too. She's got a really great design. Um, again, the faces are just what blow me away because it's like, it's so weird to see that they're actually people and they're not like space warrior robot looking Spartans. Like we never get to see, I don't even know if we get to eventually see what Master Chief looks like because then again, I played Halo 3, 4, Reach, and ODST and I don't think I ever saw what a character looked like with their helm. Actually, no, I take that back. We did um, Noble Six in Halo Reach. They were the only ones that you'd ever see with their helmets off. You never saw Master Chief. So, um, or at least I don't, I, I've never seen what Master Chief looks like with his helmet off. I don't know if they showed it in other games that I didn't play, like Halo 1 and 2 or 5. But, um... But damn, man. This is, like, an incredible evolution of development that, that is going on right now with this season. Um, like I said, super, super invested to find out more about the director, more about this plan he has... Um, especially moving forward, he seems to be like, like CT said, he seems to be filtering out the, the freelancers from each other. Um, and it seems like it's happening right now with, with, uh, with South Dakota, right? Like she's the reckless one of the two and she kind of, you know, compromised the mission. Um, you know, it's supposed to be stealth and she kind of went and went gung ho with it and that got her demoted. On top of the fact that she's already ostracized to an extent, because unlike Gary, unlike, I'm sorry, unlike Wyoming, unlike Reginald, unlike uh, uh, York, unlike, uh, you know, her brother, unlike Carolina, um, and eventually unlike um, Washington, despite her being on that list, she doesn't have an AI. So that in turn is also going to add a little bit more doubt to like, why am I not good enough? You know what I mean? That's what that's what it's going to... I feel like that's what it's going to come down to. She's going to look at the situation and be like, okay, I got demoted. I don't have an AI. I'm a freelancer, but I'm like the bot... You know what I mean? Like, she's like second rank. So, you know, she's like right above CT in this respect, right? Because CT's not on the list and she doesn't have an AI. You know what I mean? So, I feel like this is going to have a lot of people pitted against each other. She also seems like she doesn't like Carolina based on her reaction uh, in the last batch when, 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 uh, when North was like, holy crap, it's her. And then she's like, what's she doing here? And I can definitely see, I could definitely see South having a very, uh, uh, an envious personality, especially if she's being reprimanded and demoted and looked down upon. And then she sees this star student, so to speak. She sees the pinnacle of Project Freelancer, the pinnacle of artificial intel. I'm sorry, not the pinnacle. The pinnacle of of a free uh, of freelancers being Carolina and feeling inferior to her. And, and letting that feed into who she is as a character, and that will then manifest itself into hatred, into jealousy, and that's gonna lead her to do some fucked up shit. Being, getting her brother killed, stealing his, um, you know, probably wanting to steal his AI, but Meta got to it first, stealing his armor ability for herself, the bubble shield, and, um, you know, eventually setting herself up for everything else in that regard. So... Holy shit, man. This is so fascinating. This is so fascinating to, to kind of pick apart these characters that we have a bit of them, 
but we don't have everything, but we have enough context to make a lot of these uh, predictions and speculations moving forward. And I love that. I love prequel stories. I love origin stories uh, of established characters that we already know so far. Um, that's incredible to me. Also, another freelancer that we haven't seen yet is uh, Florida. Apparently, Florida is uh, is a freelancer. Uh, that was referenced back in Blood Gulch that we haven't seen them. We've heard, you know, their name mentioned. Uh, they're not on the list either, so I don't think they're like the high tier echelon. Also, realizing this right now, if if Carolina is number one and, uh, and, and Tex is an artificial intelligence who will eventually be introduced as a freelancer, um, where's that going to place her? You know what I mean? Like, do, do Tex, basically, does Tex, will Tex and and Carolina interact at some point? You know what I mean? Because I'm kind of interested to see that. Like, from the little bit that I've seen of Carolina so far, and what we've seen so far of Tex, I can't help but want to see, like, not a grudge match, but, like, I want to see how they fare up against each other. You know what I mean? Um, also, because I feel like there is maybe a... I don't want to say a connection, because I, I don't... I don't... I don't fucking know. But based on the fact that they... That they set up Carolina to almost be like Tex at the beginning, right? Black armor, somewhat similar armor ability with the camouflage. She's a badass female. She knows how to fight and everything like that. I'm just wondering if... Um, if there's any comparisons there because it's it's un it's it's undeniable that there is similarities between the two already so uh that's really interesting as well but my god this is awesome and then obviously in epsilon's case you know he's back in 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 in, in the alternate blood gulch trying to right wrongs and it seems like you know there's that erupt not not eruption but there's that that uh earthquake that's happening i don't know if that's because the power surges are going throughout the caps unit and you know as it gets more and more sporadic and more frequent that just tells that the the, the caps unit is going to die if he's not able to figure out whatever the hell's happening he's gonna have to leap through memories of memories of memories of memories of situations to kind of find out find text and write whatever you know try to write whatever grand plan he has at the end of the day and it seems like all of these characters are coming to coming into their own at this point um griff seems to be a slacker he was like hey i'm on break fuck this caboose uh not caboose um donut is is kind of becoming more in tune with himself you know what i mean with with who he is and who we know and love him to be lopez uh is is officially created as well and uh i'm wondering if it's tex or doc that is coming in from from the um uh, from command because they also did mention that you know someone got called from command and they're on their way and based on what washington said he was like you know the only time a freelancer showed up is when they needed training or they got a call in from command but also doc got called in from command when uh when um when i think it was either when church died or when it was when tex died because by the time tex got killed by donut he was there and their bodies were already in the ground. So I think Doc may have showed up after Tex died. So Tex might have showed up first. So yeah, I think that's what it actually was. Um, but I loved it. I loved this batch. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna go back, rewatch it, try to ex extrapolate a little bit more uh, for the next batch of reactions for you guys. Um, I want to know what you guys think of, of my thoughts and everything that I've addressed to you guys. I feel like this reaction is going to be like... Yeah, this reaction is most definitely going to be like 50 minutes to an hour long just because I rambled a lot at the beginning. I paused during the reaction, you know, whenever the whenever there was something worth mentioning and obviously the very end here. So um, I really hope you guys enjoy uh, my reaction so far, my journey into Red vs. Blue with Season 9. Um, like I said, leave your thoughts of anything that I mentioned, my thoughts, my theories, my uh, my opinions and anything like that with, with this, with this uh, reaction batch. Um, again, thank you guys so much for your support and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.